Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade and it's time to focus on another big, big franchise in the Sega arsenal of games. When it came to uh, um, the arcade systems, Sega kind of had its own up. There were so, the brands out there that really held it together with the, publi uh, the publisher, I should say, um, Capcom and Sega made some insane games during this period. Now this game was released in 1987, which is probably one of the oldest games we've mentioned so far. but. Even though it's really, really old, it's incredibly innovative and spawned a license that went on for decades. Now, Shinobi is one of those brands that's kind of disappeared over time, kind of overtaken by Ninja Gaiden, I would go as far as to say, but that doesn't mean it's not a great game. And there's so many features and details about this game that are not only way ahead of its time, but also that were implemented and improved and improved over the coming years when the game was ported to a whole multitude of systems. It's incredibly sophisticated for a number of reasons. One being the point system. I can't wait to talk about later in the video, in the trivia section. But without further ado, let's get into Shinobi the Arcade Game. Again, one or two player start. Don't be misconstrued into thinking this is a two player in the conventional sense. It was a turn based two player. But I have no idea what that says. I think it just says walk down the street and have a fight. So the game itself features it's a two, it's a three button dynamic even as I've just found out to my peril. Uh, the first button is to throw shurikens, the second one is to jump, and the third one performs magic. The idea is you can take one hit um, and die at any time. And the idea is you want to save as many hostages as possible. As you collect hostages, your shurikens do power up, as you can see on screen. Now you can jump between the levels, as you can see. The colour scheme is pretty basic, there's no denying that. It... Even though the colour scheme is basic though, um, the gameplay itself is very, very good. Now that guy's the boss who we're trying to avoid and he will appear at the end of the stage. Each stage is separated into three areas and that is definitely Marilyn Monroe. Once again, the game, wow, that is definitely some sort of licensing pro- Oh, ruined! That I believe was some sort of licensing problem there with this um, Stan Lee and Marvel comics there, because that was definitely a ripoff of Spider-Man. Let's get a close look at this guy. Definitely, definitely a ripoff. And once you get close to someone, you may have noticed you can uh, use your sword, but you can only use it in close proximity, which I guess makes sense, because otherwise it'll be fairly useless. There's no split level design here. Again, Sega were really onto something with this game. Um, let's have a look at this guy and his rotating nonsense. Because you can bump into people and it will just jar you, but it won't kill you. Oh, and we're getting there, Ninja. That is fairly appalling that there's an advert, oh well not an advert, but it's a warning, Ninja Wanted, and he's wearing a suit, a suit and a tie. That's unconventional, unconventional. I believe we may be at the boss. I think it's time to use that magic, or it would have been if I hadn't just got hit in the head. Alright, let's see what the magic's doing to him. Oh, no. Something tells me I'm going to have to try a little bit harder. And get down nice and low before this... Oh, no. Oof. This is not an easy game, is it? It's... Okay, I'm holding duck like you wouldn't believe. On the plus side, it would appear that the um, any damage I perform does seem to stay. Ooh. 
Ooh, that's annoying. Do you know what? We are getting another credit in that. I'm not sure it makes any difference about my proximity. Two directions. I'm a very poor effort here from myself. I do apologise. No, I didn't even set off the magic that time, did I? I'm, I could be rage quitting. This could be the first time I've ever rage quit a game on this channel. Oh, I think I defeated him and he was off screen. Okay, I'll take those up. I'll take those apples. Okay, he's dead. Okay, let's have a look. Oh no, he got me. You failed. Well, that was miserable, wasn't it? So at least it voices the mission like names. Okay, the last boss of this level is indeed a helicopter, apparently. So let's do some trivia about this game, because once again, Shinobi is one of those names that has gone around for decades. I mean, the fact the game, this license itself, is over 30 years old, to me, is quite surprising there isn't a 30 year re release of Shinobi. It must have been discussed in some Sega boardroom. Um, it was released and published. Um, by Sega in uh, 1987 in November uh, using the System 16 uh, that's their 16-bit arcade system cartridge based um, the arcade version of Shinobi was originally designed to have a sh shuriken shaped controller they were really going all in with this whole ninja thing and of course Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had arrived roughly around that time as well there was a big thing um, around the world of the popularity of this kind of Eastern war business uh, the controller itself um, was great for bonus rounds because of the way it was designed but it was awful for pretty much the rest of the game and therefore the idea was scrapped in favour of an original joystick but you can still find the designs online look up Shinobi Shuriken Joystick Google Images, boom, you'll find it um, the Mega Drive version of this game was the first one I ever played I never played the arcade one until many years later because I didn't realise I played Shinobi but on the Mega Drive it was known as Shadow Dancer um, you're a ninja, the level layouts were the same, the dynamic, even the boss, that first boss we played against was the same, but the graphics were vastly improved for that Mega Drive release. Also, you had a dog companion that you could control. It had improved shurikens and the sword um, control as well. Um, also, I touched on this earlier at the beginning of the video, but for an 80s arcade game, it had an insanely sophisticated score system, because up until that point, almost all arcade games... Um, had the standard this enemy was worth this much and you killed this many and you had so much and at the end you put in your three letters and there you were that was your high score um, but this game took it so much more it created level parameters that if you followed you got bonuses so um, at the end of a stage any time remaining was converted into scores that's normal Sonic the Hedgehog did it but if you complete a stage without using any magic you got a 5,000 bonus if you completed a stage without using any shurikens which is possible by walking up close and using your sword you got 20,000 points if you completed the game on a single credit you got a 250,000 point bonus uh, you would receive a thousand points for every hostage you saved if your score ended in 0, 1 or 2 500 if your score ended 3, 4, 5 or 6 and 200 if your score ended at 7, 8 or 9 who came up with that convoluted evil system where the hostages themselves would pay you less, surely based on a random variable of the last digit of your number. Um, but the real kicker is despite all of this wonderful work towards that point structure, the system, it, system itself, the first revisions of the arcade anyway, didn't have a BBU inside, a, a backup battery unit. Consequently, if they turned the power off, all the scores were wiped and most not even you know as late as 1987 they had arcade machines that remembered the high score between usages it had a primitive rom or it had a battery backup unit that maintained those scores so why create this incredibly sophisticated scoring system that was quirky at best but not give you the ability to retain it every single day anyway i'll stop getting annoyed and get back into shinobi 
Um, also, call me crazy, am I killing the police in this? It does seem not, not unlike the people I'm killing are police. Oh, that knife guy got me. I should have done it the other way around. But it does seem like I'm killing Canadian Mounties of some sort. Alright, got you that time, didn't I? Oh, I'm behind him, that's why. Okay. This game is almost identical to Shadow Guard, so it makes me almost want to just put it on alongside this game just to show you the similarities between the two. Have a look, and we're in. Or not. Oh no, I've still got one hostage left to, left to save. How very remiss. Let's have a look. Whoa, that's a lot of policemen. Pretty sure I just killed a lot of police. Okay, it has a dynamic where if you leave a certain area of the screen, it makes all the characters come back. I'm less, oh, less impressed by that one. No, 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 I think in 87, this would have felt like quite um, a far, oh no, that knife got me right there, didn't it? Oh, and there you go. That was the end of Shinobi, the legendary arcade game that got re-released so many times. If you want to see any more games like this on the channel, do pop in the comments and tell me the name of a game that you want to see played. But otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And let's get our letters in here and see what this game over screen looks like. And we get to see the greatest Shinobi. Apparently, epilepsy wasn't a thing in the 80s. That is making my eyes bleed. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Cheerio.